All right, uh, welcome and uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good evening from wherever you are joining us. Uh, I want to welcome us uh, this evening to another time of fellowship, another time of uh, coming together. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in His name, is there in the army. So there is no distance, there is no boundary in the realm of the Spirit. So wherever you are joining us, I want to welcome you into God's presence. I want to welcome you to this uh, wonderful time of fellowshipping together. I pray that the Lord would encourage you, the Lord will uh, strengthen you, and the Lord will pour His uh, grace and His anointing upon you as we fellowship together. The Bible says, we are two or three are gathered in my name. He said, I am there in their midst. So one thing that is guaranteed is that wherever you are, God is there with you and He sees you. He knows you. He knows every need that you have and He is going to meet you at the point of your need in Jesus' mighty name. So I want to welcome you and I want you to uh, bring in your family and friends to join us uh, tonight because we, tonight we are going to uh, continue uh, the series that we started this month, which is Soaring like an eagle, soaring like an eagle. This month has been declared as the month of our elevation in career and professional life. God is taking you to a new level, to a new dimension of life, and He wants to prepare you for all the things that He has in store for your life. There is more. There is a lot that He could do through you. There is a lot that He has already invested in your life. Christ has already laid the foundation and the Holy Spirit is building on that work to produce the best person that you could ever be. And I pray that today the Lord will speak to you. He will open your heart to receive His Word. And His Word will produce the right fruits in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So today we are going to uh, uh, invite uh, Brother Cornelius to lead us in a session of prayer. Then after that, we are going to have uh, Brother Ajibola leading us uh, in worship. Then I'm going to come back and share the word for today, preach the message for today, which is focused on discipline. And the title for today's message is Get Out of the Nest. All right? Some of us are spending too much time <laughs> in the nest. And God is about to steer that nest so that you can actually begin to fly. The time of sitting down is over. <laughs> it's time to fly right now. So the message today is tied to get out, the nest, get out of the nest. And I pray that the word will minister to you and bless you in Jesus' mighty name. So we are going to invite our brother Cordinius uh, right now to lead us in a session of prayer. Then after that, brother Ajibola Olude will come with a time of worship. So over to you, Brother Cordinius. Thank you, Pastor Johnson, for that. And uh, good afternoon, Fair Life community. I hope uh, you guys are doing great. I'm so glad you're able to join us uh, for today's service. And, you know, I'll, this is a moment of prayer. I want us to begin to appreciate the name of the Lord, to thank God, to worship Him for, for yet another opportunity for you and I to be here, right? Let's thank Him for everything He has done so far in this month because you know we're people with hope we know that god is yet to do even more greater and greater works in our lives and you know i would just want us to be always grateful to god to thank him even if it's for the gift of life for for provision for your sound health for everything god is doing in your life so pray in the mighty name is lord we thank you we worship your holy name we magnify you because you're god thank you because you're great there's no like unto you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you because you are God over everything, over our circumstances. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for everyone here today. We thank you, oh God, for those even streaming online. We worship your name for faith life community. We thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you because you said you be your church and the gate of hell will not prevail against your church. Thank you because your church is still standing, even in the midst of the whole pandemic. Thank you because you are mighty on your throne. There's no like unto you, nor can be compared to you. Father, we say be exalted in the mighty name Jesus over each individual's lives here today Lord we adore you oh God we thank you for provision we thank you for guidance thank you for speaking to us thank you for your word that you've released oh God into our lives oh God we worship your name we magnify your name we say be exalted in the mighty name Jesus receive all glory receive honor receive adoration for in Jesus precious name we have prayed 
amen and so this month right you know we're looking at soaring eye like an eagle and throughout the week right you know past week pastor johnson has been taking us through this series on you know eagles and flying like an eagle right you know vision of an eagle and you know last week was mostly focused on vision eagle if you haven't watched that go and watch uh last message um uh, you know last sunday's message it's powerful uh, you will be really blessed and so talking about egos as well you know i i want us to pray from that perspective in a sense that when an ego has a vision uh that means it gives a direction into what part to actually take you know pastor johnson made us understand that you know um, eagles can see five kilometers right you know wide i mean my eyes can see a kilometer or two kilometers well but visions because of their elevated eyes they're able to see far ahead and they have so much discipline in life and so it takes more than just having vision it takes discipline as well for you to achieve that which god wants you to achieve in life the children of israel god told them he painted a picture of the promised land to them but then they needed to have discipline and when they didn't have discipline the people that didn't have discipline they didn't actually enter into the promised land and so it's not enough for you to receive the vision you must also have the discipline direction from god and so i want us to begin to pray that God will begin to direct our path. He said He will lead us in the way to go. He will show us the way everlasting, right? He said, you know, stand at the uh, at the crossroad, right? You know, walk in the ancient path and ask for the good road. And then you will find rest for your soul. The rest you need in God comes from receiving instruction and being disciplined. And so let us begin to pray that, you know, we begin to receive instruction from God. That God will direct our path. God was directing the path of the children of Israel through Moses. But a pillar of cloud and fire, God was leading them in the route to take. They weren't the ones, right? None of them had been to the promised land before. They were just going there for the first time, right? But God was directing their steps. And so for you as well, it's not enough for you to just receive the vision of where your promised land is. You need God to actually go with you and direct you as a pillar of cloud and pillar of fire at night so let us begin to pray father we declare O oh god in that mighty energy that we receive instruction from you O oh god precept upon precept line upon line oh god a little here a little there we pray father that you begin to lead us oh god into our promised land into every of your promises for our lives oh god every word of prophecy every dreams oh god every vision you've given unto us lord we pray father that you take the lead in the name of jesus we pray oh god we ask oh god for direction from you that you direct us in the name of jesus thank you because you answered our prayers oh lord for in jesus precious name we have prayed amen and so it's not just enough for you to receive direction because he said you know uh ask for the good road right and walk in it and you find rest for your soul but then the bible says but my people said they will not and so the people decided yes i will ask for it for the good road i know the vision i know everything but i'm not gonna work in it i'm not ready to do it i want to remain in my comfort zone and comfort zone is like a five-star prison where the enemy puts god's people regardless of you know the the good food the 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 good maybe bad whatever it is you know people are still restricted in a five-star prison and so comfort will rob you of it is a distraction from you pursuing and going after all that god wants you to go you know achieve in life and so i want us to begin to pray that will come out of our comfort zone and we begin to move into every of God's promises for our lives. None shall be feeble, none shall fail, that none of these promises will fail in our lives. Pray in the mighty name, which is, Father, we pray, O God, in the mighty name, that you empower us, O God, by your spirit, O God, to come out of our shells, to come out of our comfort zone, O God, and to enter into the fullness of everything you have for us in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that you strengthen each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Like an eagle, Father, we pray, O God, for discipline, O God. There will be discipline, O God, in everything you're asking us to do in the name of Jesus. That we not doubt, O God. We not pray from a place of fear, O God, but from a place of faith in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, for the discipline required, O God, to achieve all that you want us to achieve. To be all you want us to achieve, be in life, O God. We pray, Father, that you help us in the name of Jesus. O God, for us to, right? 
to, to, to do all you do, all in us to do, oh God, to spend more time in your presence, oh God, with your word in place of prayer, in seeking your face, oh God, in, in, in growing ourselves, our skills, oh God, in every aspect of our lives, in the name of Jesus, that we dedicate ourselves, oh God, to doing all that we need to do, oh God, to become everything you want us to become and to achieve all you want us to achieve in life, in the name of Jesus. Marisha Katali Kereberebeteshida, Libro Kotolia Sekatayaga Barabartashida, Eli Kereberebeteshida, Libro Kotoli Kereberebeteshida, Laba Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And when it comes to receiving direction from God and discipline, that means you need to be separated from distractions because distractions will come here and there. And at times, certain distractions, they are, they are not necessarily bad, but because of priority, they shouldn't come into your life. And so not every distraction looks bad, right? There are certain things that are, re that are good, but then you must know that this is not priority. And so if I do it at this particular moment, this is a distraction for me. And so I want us to begin to pray that God would deliver us from every distraction. That will be focused on Him. will be focused on now the promised land. It will be focused on all that He wants us to achieve in life. And so that because things will begin to pull us from air and say, oh, I want you to compromise, right? You know, why not do this instead of that thing God wants you to do? Well, that thing, what God is asking you to do is, is, is going to take a long time, right? Why not take a shortcut? Why not do something else? Why not set a, a lesser goal for yourself to achieve? But we... As the people of God, we don't want that. And so I want us to begin to declare that God will deliver us from every distraction in this season. Father, we declare, oh God, that I might end, that you deliver us, oh God, from every form of distractions in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that you keep us focused on you, oh God. Focus, oh God, on the joy that is set ahead of us, oh God, so that we endure, oh God, whatever we need to endure today in the name of Jesus. The treasure, oh God, that lies ahead of us, oh God. We set our, our foul focus on it in the name of Jesus. Malisha Katali Kere Berebetesida, Libro Katali Karabarabatashida, Ejegabete Libro Kotoli Kere Berebetesida, Libra Katali Karabarabatashida, that you guide us, you keep us from every distraction in the name of Jesus. We pray that we'll be focused, O God, that we we'll achieve all that we need to achieve in life in the name of Jesus, for the glory of your name. Thank you because you answered our prayers, O God. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us. Um, and um, stay blessed. Today's service is going to be amazing. And so open yourself up to, you know, all that God will do, you know, through worship, through the word of God and through prayer that will come right during the service. And so I'll hand over back to Pastor Johnson right now. God bless you. Amen. All right, uh, Brother Cornelius, thank you for that uh, wonderful uh, session of prayer. And we want to uh, thank you all for joining us in that moment of prayer. And I pray that the Lord himself will hear all our cry, all our prayer. And if you are trusting God for job opportunities, you are trusting God for open doors for your career, to the next level of your career. I pray that this month the Lord will hear your cry the same way that he hear the cry of the Israelites when they were in bondage in Egypt. I pray that the Lord will come down and he will open the door for you. He will open the door of opportunity for you in the name of Jesus. So now I'm going to ask our brother Ajibola to lead us in a session of worship. Then after that, I'm coming back with today's message. Today's message is titled, Get Out of the nest okay god is giving you a word today that it's time it's time to come out of the nest you've spent too much time <laughs> staying in your comfort zone god is saying this is time to get out of the nest and i pray that the lord will speak to you and bless your heart with today's message so let's invite our brother ajibola olude to lead us in a session of uh, worship Lord, we give you praise this afternoon. We thank you because you are good. We thank you because you are good to us. We thank you because from one generation to another, the name of the Lord is to be praised and to be lifted I amidst the nations. We thank you because as a community, 
You've been so good to us You've been so good to us Now can you just take this time out to us shine the presence of God And to give Him praise and to worship Him The scripture says that thou worship Must worship in spirit and in truth we worship you in spirit and in truth this afternoon. And we say that you've been so good to us, Jesus. Oh, you've been so good to us, Jesus. Hey, you've been so good to us, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We thank you because we are so so on wings like eagles we thank you because you are taking us to higher heights we thank you because you are bringing us into higher dimensions we thank you because you are bringing us into higher realms you are bringing us into our season of elevation we are in that season of elevation Oh, you've been so good to us. You know, can we just thank God for the testimonies we are hearing already? You know, there are testimonies all around of the goodness of God, of the workings of God, of the lifting of God. You've been so good to us, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. And we tell ourselves, speak to our souls, that my soul aligned with what God is doing in this season. My spirit align with what God is doing in this season. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my soul, do you not know? Have you not heard? It's been told from the beginning The Lord you got is on your side Oh my soul, don't be afraid Open the Lord in his righteousness and power he will rescue and he will guide and i will soul on wings like eagles and by the hand of god And i grow tired When on his name I call For the Lord Is never weary His ways Are beyond my thoughts I will trust in him With I will trust in Him with all my heart. This is our declaration that we trust in the Lord. I will trust in Him with all my heart. And I will soar on wings like a ghost Held by the hand of God I will run 
and not grow tired when on his name I call on for the Lord he's never weary and his ways are beyond my thought I will trust in him we are my God. I will trust in Him. We are my heart. We'll trust in You, Jesus. I will trust in You. With all my heart, we trust in you because you're a good father. I will trust in you. With all my heart, we trust in you because you're a good God. I will trust in you. With my heart, I'll trust in you, Jesus, with all my heart. Oh, I will trust in you, with all my heart. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. And forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. And I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, and forever, Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, because from Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh, and I hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, we thank you. Forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. It's strange us to do of your good and your sweet pleasure. Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. We worship you this morning. We bless you. I hope he's in you. Our eyes are on you, Jesus. Our eyes are on you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your lifting. I hope it's Yahweh, Yahweh. And we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Amen. Thank you so much for that uh, wonderful session of uh, worship. And I want to welcome those who are uh, just joining us. Thank you for joining us for today's uh, service. 
So today is the third uh, session in our series for the month on soaring like an eagle. And before we go into the word, I want us to just pray right now. I want you to ask that the Lord would open up your heart and open your, your spirit to receive guidance, to receive instruction from His Spirit. The main teacher of the word is the Spirit, is the teacher of the word. And I pray that tonight as we speak God's word, it will bring power, authority, transformation into our lives. In the name of Jesus, we will never remain the same. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the word of God will come expressly. It will come with power and it will deliver. It will save, it will rescue, it will heal, and it will transform. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome you uh, tonight. And uh, our topic for today's session is get out of the nest. Get out of the nest. We've been looking at soaring uh, like an eagle. And we believe that uh, the plan of God for us as believers is that we reach our best, is that we become the very best that he has uh, created us to, to be. And there is so much that God has invested in us so that we can be the best that we could be. Just like any parent, just like any father, I have never seen a parent that doesn't think of his own child, either son or daughter, to become the best. So they go extra mile. They invest everything they can to ensure that the kids have everything that is required for them to be the best. And that's the same thing with God. He cares, He provides, He guides, He leads, He gives us everything that we need with the end goal that we can become the best that He has created us to be. So before we go uh, into the message, I want us to read uh, some scriptures. Uh, we are going to read a few scriptures that will be the foundation for the rest of the message today. We are going to read first from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 11 to 13. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11 to 13. It says, as an eagle steers up his nest, overs, overs is young, and spreading out its wing, taking them out, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign God with him. He made him ride on the heights of the land, and fed him with the fruit of the fields. He nourished him with honey from the rock, and with oil from the fling crane. Now, I want you to take note of the word, an eagle, as an eagle steers up his nest as an eagle steers up his nest, okay, as an eagle steers up his nest. And you see the end product of that is that uh, God said that's how he is also leading his own children. And he make them to ride on the heights of the land. He make them to ride on the heights of the land. If you want to ride high, then your net will have to be steered. You have to come out of the nest. All right, let's move to First uh, Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 24 to 27, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. This is Apostle Paul writing. He said, do you not know that in a race, all runners run, but only one get the prize? They run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in games goes into strict training. I want you to take note of that. Everyone who competes in game goes into strict training. He said they do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like somebody running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the hair. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it a slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. You see, this is Apostle Paul giving us an analogy of life to the race that we are also running. He said, in every race, there are many runners, but only one get the prize. So we have to run in a way to win. And the only difference between the winner and the loser is discipline. 
He said they go into strict training and discipline. The people that win, they go into strict training and discipline. The third scripture we are going to read is Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. The Bible says, like a city whose walls are broken down through in is a person who lacks self-control. Now, the word there is self-control. That's another word that describes uh, self-discipline. Self-control. He said, somebody who lacks self-control is like a city that the world is broken down. That means anything can happen and is vulnerable to attack because anything can come in and go out. The last scripture that we are going to read is from Hebrews. Sorry, uh, it's not Proverbs. It's Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 and 2, not Proverbs 25, sorry. It's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. It said, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. I want you to take note of that. Every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance. Some translations say patience. The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the same, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. So, our topic for today is get out of the nest. <coughs> get out of the nest. So, if you look at the text that we are read, we've read about four scriptures in the book of Deuteronomy. The Bible gave us another analogy because we've seen one in Exodus 19 where God says, I carried the Israelites on eagle's wing. So that means God said, I moved them out of Egypt and I carried them on eagle's wing. But God is giving us another analogy that actually... I actually take them through an experience where I am training them, preparing them for where I'm taking them. And the way, uh, what I did is that I want them to ride to the greatest height possible. And so what I'm doing is I'm steering up their nest, just like an eagle steer up the nest of his young one. Because the eagle is the animal that we are looking at today. And one of the attribute of the ego is that ego does not settle down in comfort zone. Ego does not settle down in comfort zone. So the nest is where the ego is born. The ego is born in the nest. At the early stage, it stays in the nest. It doesn't fly. It doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. The parent's ego, the mother ego and the, the parent, they go uh, all around to f look for food and bring it for the for the for the uh, little one they take care of it they protect it one of the parents will, will be around to, to protect so it's in a place of comfort it's in a place where everything that he need is actually delivered but it comes to a point in time that the mother ego will have to disrupt that comfort the mother ego will have to take that child ego beyond just settling down on the same spot is going to steer the nest and that's a very that's a very very uh, tricky one because the ego has not really fly before so the first time is really very challenging because it's going to have that fear that i might fall the fear that i might die and usually ego they build their nest on top of, on, on top of the tree so when the mother ego steer that nest there is that tendency for the ego to think that Oh, I'm in for downfall. I'm going to fall. Things are not going to work out. But you see, one thing that the mother ego does is that as he's training the child, he's going to hover under it. That's what that Deuteronomy 32 tells us. He's going to hover under it so that when he needs any support, he's there to support it. Just like the same way, I mean, I have little kids. I train them how to ride bicycle. You know, as they are learning to ride the bicycle, I am holding the bicycle so that they can actually learn the art of riding the bicycle. But the moment they know how to ride the bicycle, I don't have to support them any longer. They can ride the bicycle on their own. The same thing when God is training us, is there with us, is supporting us, is carrying us on his wings. He's not going to let you fall. He's going to give you all the things that you need. 
but you have to go through that process. God will take you through the process and it's not necessarily going to be an easy process. No, it's not going to necessarily be easy. It's going to be hard because it will look like punishment. But when you go through that discipline, it produces the right character and you become a person that God desired you to be. So discipline is so crucial, is so important to our Christian journey, to our Christian faith, because life is like a race. The person that will win in the game of life is somebody who will go through that strict discipline. That's what Apostle Paul told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Uh, 23 to 27, he said, everybody competes in a race, but only one win the prize. The difference between the, the person that win the prize and the person that did not win is the person that win the prize go through strict discipline. And I like the word strict because strict means you are you, to, to, to be hard in doing something. If you go to, uh, I mean, you see maybe some athletes that are winning medals, that are winning a gold, gold, gold medal. You see, the thing is that if you go through the process that they go through to train themselves, prepare for the competition, which might just be a 45 minute or, or even less, it's a whole lot of weeks, months, or sometimes even year before they get to that stage where they have mastered the process and they can actually succeed. The same thing in life. If you want to uh, achieve the best in life, number one, you must have your high focus on the price. So what is the end goal of the discipline that you want? That, that must be very clear. You have to have a defined goal. For example, there are so many areas that we need discipline, but each of the areas that we need discipline, there are different goals that we want. So for example, if I'm, if I'm talking about my health now, I need to do exercise with my body. But the end goal is that I might be physically fit. That's the end goal. Okay. I have about uh, uh, saving money. Okay. I have about saving money. Oh, that's, that's another area where I need to discipline myself. But what is the end goal? So that I can have resource for the future. Now, there is temptation for me to spend everything that I have right now. There is a lot of things that are demanding the attention for me to spend everything right now. But it takes an act of discipline to say, no, I'm not going to spend it all. I'm going to put some things down for the future. So it depends on what exactly is the end goal. So every discipline must be tied to an outcome, to a result that you want to get. So in your career as well, what is the end result that you are looking for? A lot of people, like we said last week, when we talk about having a dream, because the, the, the how far you can go depends on the vision that you have for your life. A lot of people can only see now. They cannot see far into the future. They cannot see their career in the next five years. They cannot see their career in the next 10 years. So if you don't have a long-term vision for your life, then your life will just be blown up and down. In fact, the Bible says anybody that doesn't have uh, self-control is like a city whose wall is broken down. So that means anything can, can just interrupt your life. But when you have a vision, then what will make that vision possible is discipline. Is discipline. That's why the Bible says uh, without vision, people cast off restraint. Because anytime we have vision, what follows is restraint. Vision set boundary. Okay, because that proverb says that without self-control, a, a man without self-control is like a city whose wall is broken down. So when you have self-discipline, it means you are building boundaries or walls to say, yes, this is what I will do. This is what I will not do. This is what I'm going to uh, focus on. This is what I, I'm not going to focus on. You can focus on what is important, not just anything. You know what to do. You know when to do it and you know how to do it. And you can focus on it and discipline yourself to get it done. So that's, that's, that's very important. So you must have a, an end goal that you are tying to the discipline uh, that you are trying to imbibe. Because if you don't have an end goal, then you, you will not be motivated to actually uh, uh, do it. So when we look at scriptures, the Bible is very clear that God's desire is that we as his children should be the best. And God does not train us in our comfort zone. 
Sometimes God takes us beyond our comfort zone so that we can become the person that we become. I mean, one of the uh, uh, message that for me has changed my life is the story of Joseph. Joseph was in his father's house. He was beloved. He was pampered. In fact, you, you would discover that Joseph, the Bible says the father gave him the coat of many color. He gave him the coat of many color. He is in a place where he was pampered by the parent. He was pampered. In fact, when his brothers are out, Joseph is there at home with his father because he's the, only, he's the first child of his beloved wife, Rachel. Okay? So the father pampered him. But God knows that, no, this guy, there is so much in him beyond where he is right now. So what did God do? He gave him a vision first. He gave him a dream. He saw a vision of the next 13 years of his life. Joseph saw himself twice. He saw himself twice. He said, oh, my, my sieve was standing and that of my brother, they were bowing down for me. That's a 13-year dream before it came to pass. He saw that dream. But what is the process for him to get that dream realized? God has to take him out of his father's house. He has to take him out of his comfort zone. But it's not a palatable experience. He was hated by the, his brother. He was persecuted by his brother. He was thrown into the pit. He was sold into slavery. He was lied upon. He was put in prison. These are experiences that are not palatable. But they are the instrument that God used to build character in him. Because before God opened the door to the national stage, for him, he has to disturb his conversion. You see, many of us are staying in the nest. It might be your father's house. It might be your father's compound. It might be your comfort zone where you feel pampered. But if you really want to fly as an eagle, you cannot stay on the nest. If you want to fly, you have to learn how to fly on your own. You have to learn how to come out of your comfort zone. And that training is what God wants to train you. Discipline is for training. Discipline is not punishment. Discipline is to train you to become the best version of you. And God will not just sit down as a loving father and not take you to the process. Even though we don't like that process, but God will still uh, give us that process so that we can become the best person that we will be. So if you look at that Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says we should look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You see, the, the book of Hebrews chapter 12 was a continuation of what the Lord has been telling us in Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible showcased the heroes of faith, the people that do great and mighty things in their lifetime because they walk with God. The people that do great exploits. The Bible says they that do know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploit. God wants you to be an exploit maker. He wants you to be somebody that makes a difference in your lifetime. So he gave us all the list of heroes of faith. And then he started in chapter 4. He said, therefore, therefore, and he, 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 he finished it all by telling us to look unto Jesus, who is the author. He said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured. He endure. I like that word endure because that's one of the things that discipline does. It makes you to endure the pain of the present for the gain of tomorrow. He said he endured the suffering of the present because of the joy that was uh, ahead of him. And if you read that Hebrews chapter 12 further, after that verse 2, the Lord began to speak to us about the power of discipline. From verse 3 to verse 11, he spoke to us about the discipline of the Lord. He said we should not resist the discipline of the Lord. He said because whoever the Father loves, those he corrects. He corrects. So he said if you resist the discipline, he said it means you are not a true son. And so he gave us the need for discipline. Now let me start by telling you that there are... So when you talk about discipline, I want you to take note of these two words that are connected with discipline. Number one, discipline is about self-control. Okay? Discipline is about self-control. And number two, discipline is about self-denial. Okay? Discipline is about self-control and discipline is about self-denial. Now, what does the two mean? Now, there are two challenges that we have as human beings. Number one thing is that 
and, and that is echoed by Paul in the book of Romans chapter 7. He said, the good that I want to do, I do not do it. He said, the bad things that I don't want to do, that's what I'm doing. That is like uh, uh, a metaphor for the life of human being on this earth. You know the good that you are supposed to do, but you lack the power to do it. That's the first one. So I know what is right, but I'm not doing it. The second one, I know what is wrong, and I don't want to do it, but I'm doing it. You say the, the, the second one is what the Bible calls sin. Sin means I know this thing is wrong, but I still do it. I know this thing is against the law of the Lord, is against the commandment of the Lord, but I still do it. That is sin. But the other one, which is not a sin, is I know this thing is good, but I'm not doing it. That one is another issue. A lot of people have good dreams. They have good visions. They have good ideas. But the gap between that idea and its realization is discipline. So that's why if you read that Hebrews chapter 2, it said, let's lay aside. Let us lay aside every weight. Okay? Weights are not things that are bad. Weights are things that will drag you down. Weight are things that will slow your journey. When you carry weight, you cannot run fast. Because life is a race that you have to run. The speed at which you move in life depends on how light the load that you are carrying. So he said, let's drop every weight. So weight are not sin. Weight are things that are there to slow you down. When you begin to walk in discipline, you will have self-denial. There are some things that are not necessarily wrong. There are some things that are not necessarily bad. But you just say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You know? So, weights are things that we need to first lay aside. The second thing that he asks us to lay aside is sin. He says, sin does easily beset. He says, we should lay it aside. So, self-control and self-denial is one of the key that will help us to become the best that God has for your life. So when you talk about discipline, you can tie it to self-control. And the Bible relates it as the fruit of the Spirit. That's why that proverb that we read, he said, a man that lacks self-control is like a city whose wall is broken down. It means that man, anything can just come and go. Everything. He said yes to everything. And everything can just come and go. You see, if you don't discipline yourself, especially with respect to what you are doing, what you are not doing, you cannot move far in life. So, discipline builds boundaries around your life. So, the Bible says we should look unto Jesus. When we look at Jesus on the cross, then we can have an idea of what life of a believer looks like. In fact, somebody defined a disciple of Jesus as a disciplined apostle. And I like that. He said, a disciple, the word disciple, actually the root is discipline. The root to the word disciple is discipline. It's a disciplined apostle. It's somebody that followed the instruction of the master, the instruction of the leader. Whether it's convenient, whether it's not convenient, he, he follow it. That's a disciplined apostle. That's a disciple. That's a disciple. So Jesus has called us to be his follower, to be his, uh, to be, to be, to be, his, to be, to be his disciple. But the way that he trained us to become a true disciple is through discipline. So let me just uh, quickly summarize a few things that we can pick from Hebrews chapter 12 on uh, the power of discipline or why we need discipline. Number one, number one thing that the Bible uh, tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 on discipline is that uh, number one you see discipline may weary you out and you feel like quitting okay it's not a smooth experience it's not a palatable experience so when you go through discipline it might be wearying to your soul your soul might feel wearied and you want to quit. If you look at Jesus before he went to the cross, what was the statement that he made? You see, Jesus didn't just go through the wilderness, which is one experience where you get to uh, to be tempted by the devil. The, the temptation in the in the wilderness is about sin. The temptation in the wilderness was Jesus about sin. The temptation. The devil came to tempt him in the garden. 
It's about sin. And he said no to it. But the second stage, before he got to the cross, was he, his soul was exceedingly sorrowful when he was in the garden. And he went and prayed. He said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass over me. He prayed three times. In fact, he told his disciples, he said they should be praying for him. He, he told them that, watch with me. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. So, discipline, it doesn't come easy. It's something that might be weary to your soul. And if you look at that, Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, in uh, uh, verse 5, he said, uh, have, have you not forgotten? Have you forgotten the exhortation uh, that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. So he said, don't be weary. It can weary you out. That's why the Bible says in uh, Isaiah chapter 40, he said, they will mount up with wings like eagle. They will run and not be weary. Life can be weary so when you are subjecting yourself to uh, discipline, it can be tiring, it can be weary. When will it end? When will this thing, if it is possible, let this thing just pass. Let it know. You need to be strengthened. You need to not give up. You need to not resist. If you go to gym, for example, oh, many of us, we have quit going to gym. We have quit doing things that we know is right to do. Why? Because we are just tired. We are just worn out. So discipline, it's not easy. It can weary your soul. So the Bible says we should not lose heart. The, the NIV translation in that verse 5 says, do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. And another translation says, don't give up. Don't give up. And I'm telling you, you might be going through an experience now where God is training you for the next level, for the next position. Don't give up. Don't give up. Sometimes we feel like quitting. That when is this thing going to be over? When is it going to be end? Don't Don't worry. God, that's a perfect time. I can imagine Joseph too, when he was going through all the pit experience, all the experience, I can imagine what he's feeling. In fact, he helped somebody in the prison and he told him, please, when you get to the palace, don't forget me. For two years, the guy didn't remember him. I can imagine, maybe he's thinking, ah, maybe I help this guy, he doesn't even remember. But at the right time, God opened the door for him. So I'm telling you, don't give up. Don't weary. God is taking you through the journey. And he will see you to the hand. The Bible says, it's not the starter that wins. It's only the day that endure to the hand that will be saved. So discipline can, can become wearisome to your soul because it's not palatable. That's the first thing that I want you to bear in mind. Number two thing is that love motivates acts of discipline. Love motivates acts of discipline. You see, the, every father, they love their children. And one of the things that they do uh, every parent, including mother, one of the things that they do is they discipline the children. Now, the goal of discipline is to train them, is to correct them when they need correction, is to guide them, is to lead them to become the best that they could be. Now, a parent that truly loves their kids will not just let them do anything they want. It will, it will set boundary. It will not just let them sit down from morning till night watching television and doing nothing. He will not let them sit down and, and just say, well, I just want to feel good. No, 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 no. There is nothing like that. So a good parent set boundaries. A good parent set discipline. Say, okay, you can do this at this time, but at this particular time, this is what you need to do. That's the same thing that God also does. So love motivates discipline. And also, I have discovered that if you also love what you are doing, if you love your career, if you love the job that you are doing, it will produce an act of discipline. That's why sometimes when I'm doing uh, my work, which I love, definitely, I don't even see how that thing becomes like a body to me. I can spend hours and hours because I'm just enjoying it. So love inspires discipline. It motivates discipline. In fact, when you look at the scripture, the fruit of the spirit that the Bible gave to us, the first one that the Bible mentioned is love. But the last one that the Bible mentioned is self-control. So it means the boundary between the first fruit of the Spirit and the last one is between love and self-control. The two of them, they go together. Love is the initiator. But the one that accomplishes the task 
is self-control. In fact, if you look at all the things that the Bible mentioned in the fruit of the Spirit, it mentioned patience, endurance, long-suffering. These are things that are produced through discipline. They are produced through discipline. So love is the motivator, but everything else is a product of self-control. Everything else. Everything else in the fruit of the Spirit is a product of self-control. But love is the motivator. So love motivates uh, discipline. That's why in verse 6 of that Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says, uh, For the Lord disciplines those he loves. For the Lord disciplines those he loves. And he asks us not to resist the discipline of our Father. He only disciplines those that he loves. Love motivates discipline. Oh, why is God taking me all through this? Why is God allowing me to go through all of these things? Let me tell you, it might just be a training for your, for, your, for your next level. I can imagine, maybe in 13 years, Joseph will be wondering, what about the dream that I saw? What about the thing that God said about my life? In 13 years, it's not happening. When I first got to Canada too, I have a very horrible experience. And I almost think, why did God say that I should come here? <laughs> I almost packed my bag. One day I said, I'm going. I'm leaving this country. I don't even want to know. It was an unpalatable experience. But God said, no, you are not going back. You are going forward. And I want to encourage you, don't, don't look back. Look forward. God might be taking you through a journey now if you can, be, uh, 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 if you can understand that it's from a loving heart that is doing it, you can endure whatever thing that might be going on. Now, the third thing that I want to share with you about discipline is that discipline builds godly character. And the Bible talks about two of them in the book of Hebrews. One of them is endurance and patience. And you know, these are what the Bible refers to as the fruit of the Spirit. It builds endurance and patience. It builds endurance and patience. In verse 7 of that Hebrews chapter 12, it said, Endure hardship as discipline. Endure hardship as discipline. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, Paul also advised Timothy. He said, Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. You see, the Bible is comparing us to the way that soldiers are trained. Soldiers are trained to endure hardship. Can you imagine a soldier that is in Afghanistan? A soldier that is in the, the most of their work is in the bush, is in the desert. They fight war, but they have to endure it. He said, as a good soldier of Christ, he said we should endure as hardness. There are times that we have to go through discomfort today, go through some pain today for the gain of tomorrow. So it is only people who endure to the end that get the price. It's only people that endure. Many people quit before their time show up. Many people quit before their dream come true. Many people quit because things look challenging and hard. But disciplines makes us to endure. It build character. It build character of endurance, patience, and long suffering within us. Discipline is what produces it. There are a lot of people that when they come to career, they are just changing career. Today is this one, tomorrow is that one. No. You need to endure. You need to endure because before you can reap the reward of in any field, in any career, it takes time. And most of us, we don't have that patience. And we live in an Instagram generation, instant, instant gratification generation. Everybody wants it right now. Nobody wants to wait. But what you would discover is that the Bible says Jesus endured. That word endure was used when he described Jesus. He said he endured the pain of the cross. He endured it. He endured it. That means he suffered it and he was going through it knowing what is coming ahead so discipline build that character in you that you don't give up easily you don't quit easily people will say ah, ah but uh, uh, the things are not working you say no i know where i'm going i know where i'm going because sometimes it's just one step that you are close to the breakthrough that you are looking for when people quit so it is only people who develop that character of endurance and patience when things are tough those are the people that win if you see anybody that has succeeded as an entrepreneur or in business or in any endeavor that they have done go and check behind it 90 percent of what you don't see is their endurance their patience 
they are long suffering and they are, they are the hardship the that they are going through. 90%. You don't know it. It's only 10% of their life that you are seeing in public. So they are trained in private to endure. Because it's those that endure to the end that they are saved. So that's in verse 7 of Hebrews 12. Now, the fourth, the fourth thing that I want to share is that a disciplined life will command respect. A disciplined life will command respect. In verse 9, the Bible says, uh, since re we respected our earthly father who disciplined us. We respected our earthly father who disciplined us. You see, when you begin to live a life of discipline, when you begin to list, uh, live a life of discipline, your colleagues, everybody in your office, they will respect you. Because when you begin to live a life of discipline, you will get things done. Where others are giving excuses, where others are complaining, where others are saying, ah, we don't have enough time to get this thing done. You just do it. You just get it done because you manage your time well. You are disciplined in the use of your time. You are disciplined in the use of your resources. So you, you are able to get it done faster. You are two steps ahead. And what that does is that it commands respect. Sometimes when you are living a disciplined life, you fly to a height that others are imagining them, themselves being. And that, that brings respect to you. So when you live a disciplined life, what it does is it commands respect from everybody around you. People will respect you when they know that you are a disciplined person, that they can trust you, that you will get the job done. So respect is one of the outcomes of discipline. And the Bible said in verse 10, uh, verse 9, that we respect our earthly fathers who discipline us. So discipline commands respect. The fifth thing that I want to tell us is that uh, discipline is for our good. Discipline is for our good. You see, if you don't see it that way, if you see it's against me, why is everything working against me? Why is God bringing all of this thing against me? Then you will have a wrong perspective about it. But discipline is for your good because there is no gold cannot come out as gold unless it passes through fire. We like gold when it comes out. The beauty of it is good. But what does it pass through before it becomes gold? He has to go through the fire. It is the fire that refines the good to make it the best of what it is. So discipline also is for our good. The Bible says in verse 10 of Hebrews chapter 12, he said for uh, the dips, the, he's talking about uh, earthly parents. He said they discipline us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplined us for our good. For our good. He wants to produce Christ-like nature in us. So he disciplined us for our good. So discipline is for your good. It builds your character and it builds uh, you into a person that you need to become. For example, Joseph, by the time he showed up in the palace, he's already a grown-up man. He's already a man of good character that even when his brother, when they came in and they said, ah, sorry, forgive us. We didn't know. Please forgive us. He said, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. I'm already above it. I'm not holding grudges. I'm not holding bitterness against you. He said, you meant it for evil, but God has already turned it around so that I can prepare ground for you. So he, has, he, he doesn't just have a position. He has the character that it takes to succeed in that position. So discipline is for your good because God does not just want to put you in a position. He wants you to build you as a person for the character that it takes to be where he wants to place you. Okay? Then the... Last thing that I want to talk about on the power of discipline is that discipline is painful. That is very, very important. Discipline is painful. Discipline is uncomfortable today, but it brings comfort tomorrow. Discipline is painful today, but it brings gain tomorrow. Discipline is denying yourself some pleasure today so that you can have a pleasurable tomorrow. If you are very easy on yourself today, then life may be hard tomorrow. But if you are very hard on yourself at the early stage of your life, then you will have laid some foundation that will make life pleasurable tomorrow. So Jesus, for the gain that was set ahead of him, he endured the current moment. So in verse 11 of that Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time. At the time you are going through it, it doesn't seem pleasant. He said, but painful. Later on, 
however it produces harvest so discipline is like a seed that i'm putting in today to get some harvest tomorrow discipline is like a seed that i'm putting in today to get some harvest tomorrow so if you are not putting in that discipline that is required today then your tomorrow is already been decided if you are not putting in the discipline that it takes to save then you are already deciding your tomorrow if you are not putting in the discipline that it takes for you to stay healthy and fit, then you are already sabotaging your tomorrow. If you are not putting in the discipline that it takes today to build your business, to build your career, then you are already sabotaging tomorrow. Because you can only get the harvest when you go through the pain right now. No pain, no gain. Jesus saw the joy that was ahead and he endured the suffering. Today, he was suffering. Tomorrow, he was in glory. There is no crown without the cross. There is no crown without the cross. Many of us like to wear the crown, but the path to it is through the cross. You have to go through the cross. You have to go through the pain. You have to go through the suffering. You have to go through the challenges and overcome them before God can put the crown on your head. You know, there was a time in the scripture that the disciples, they came to Jesus they said, oh, in fact, it is the mother of Sebedes, the mother of uh, uh, Sebedes, Peter and, and uh, uh, his brother. They came to, she came to Jesus, and the Bible says she was worshipping Jesus. And she said, if it is possible, let these my two sons, one, let him sit on your right hand in the place of power. Let the other one sit on your left. He think it's by connection. He said, Jesus said, you don't know what you are asking for. Because people want to be great in life, but they don't know the process that produces greatness. He said, if you can drink the cup that I'm going to drink, then you have a place. He said, but unless you can drink that cup, you, you have no place. And he told those people, he said, there is a cup that you have to drink. There is a process that you go through to produce greatness in your life. So today's pain is going to lead to tomorrow's gain. So what are the self-sacrifice that you are going through? What are the self-deniers that you are going through to get the reward for tomorrow? So there is no pain without gain. Every athlete knows that for him or her to win the prize, to win the, the crown, to win the uh, competition, he has to go through strict discipline today. If he missed the opportunity to go for practice, if he missed the opportunity to go for rehearsals, if he missed the opportunity to do all the things that is required for the competition, he's going to lose. You can predict the outcome. He's going to lose. But when you see somebody who desire to win the prize, they go through strict discipline. So I don't know how far you also want to go. Then we can look at it from the seed that you are planting today. Because today's discipline will lead to tomorrow's gain. So if you want a better life, if you want a better future, then if you want a joyful future, then you have to endure and go through some pain right now. You have to be disciplined in how you do things. Now, that is uh, the power that discipline has. But I want to summarize uh, tonight with what areas do you need to discipline yourself? Now, I know our focus is on career, but discipline applies to every aspects of our life as a believer there is no result that you are desiring in any aspects of your life that will come through the easy road if you see any part in life that has no challenges if you see any part in life that has no difficulty it will lead you nowhere it will lead you nowhere any part that has no challenges that has no difficulty it leads nowhere it leads nowhere so that's why if you want to go far, then you have to get out of the nest. You cannot stay in your comfort zone and expect magic to happen. A lot of us, we are very good, faith people, we confess, we declare, but the missing point is the discipline that is required. That's why the Bible says we should add to our faith knowledge. We should add to our faith knowledge. Peter, Apostle Peter was advising. He said, add to your faith knowledge. And then he said, add to knowledge, self-control. Faith itself demands discipline. That's why in the scripture that we read in Hebrews chapter 12, 
Do you know that it's a scripture that continues the conversation about faith from Hebrews 11? And it says, our faith should look at Jesus. And what does our faith see in Jesus? Our faith sees somebody who lived a disciplined life. Somebody who lived a disciplined life. He endured the suffering. He endured the pain of the cross so that he can receive the joy, the crown of glory that was ahead. So if we are also walking by faith, the evidence of it will be through self-control, will be through discipline, will be through ensuring that we submit ourselves to the authority of God. The cross might not be something that we desire. It might be something that looks like if this cup can pass over me. But when we understand the will of God, the purpose of God, and the plan of God, we are able to endure to this suffering, to this challenges so that we can get to where God is taking us. So the nemesis of the Israelites in Egypt is that they came out of Egypt but they could not go beyond the wilderness because they could not endure the pain, the challenges because the wilderness was meant to shape their character and prepare them for the promised land. But they fell out, they gave up, they quit because they were, they were worn out. They weary out in the wilderness. I pray the Lord will release his strength, his grace upon your life that Whatever training God is putting in your life, whatever discipline God is asking you by His Spirit that you should go through right now for your tomorrow, I pray today that there's the will, the power to do it through the Spirit will be released upon you in the name of Jesus. Now let me share with you in closing uh, areas that you need discipline. If you are going to fly like an eagle, if you are going to fly like an eagle, what are the areas that you need uh, discipline. What are the areas that you need discipline? If you are going to fly like an eagle, if you are going to fly and reach the topmost top, you cannot stay in the nest. You have to get out of the nest. You have to get out of the nest. So if you are going to fly in life like an eagle, not just in your career, in your spiritual life, in every area of your life, what are the areas that you need discipline? Number one, you need spiritual discipline. You need spiritual discipline. You need spiritual discipline. Okay? You need spiritual discipline. Everything that will produce godly character. You know, the end goal of discipline is to produce holiness, to produce the character of Christ in you. But that holiness, that character of Christ will not be produced in you except you submit yourself to the discipline of the law. Except you submit yourself. That's why Jesus, the Bible says, even though he was God, he made himself all of low reputation and he took the form of a servant. Okay? So he submit himself. He submit himself to the Father. He submit himself to the pain of the cross. So submission means I put myself under the control of the word of God. I put myself under the control of the Holy Spirit. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. God does not give you the power to control somebody else. But he has given you the power to control your own self. He has given you the power to do the things that he has asked you to do. Sometimes you, you, the Holy Spirit is asking you to pray. But you see, you say, well, I don't think it's important. You see, you need self-control. You need self-discipline to be able to do the things of God. They don't come easy. The things of the Spirit, they are not easy to do. That's why you see Jesus, he wake up early in the morning to pray. That's why you see Jesus, he go all around doing the mission that God has called him. So if you are also going to achieve all the spiritual things that need to be done, there must be discipline in your life. There must be discipline in your life. You need to intentionally determine that you are going to study the word. You won't sit down and, and find time that you will open your Bible. The things that are very easy for us to do, watch TV, sit down, do other things. They are very easy. You don't need discipline to watch TV. But for you to sit down and study the scripture, for you to sit down and pray, for you to sit down and, and, and uh, 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 give and, and do other things, it takes discipline. It takes discipline. Even to do fasting, it takes discipline. Because the day that you say you want to fast, that might be the day that uh, you have the most delicious food cook around you. And so you have that temptation to say, ah, I think I have to postpone this fasting. It takes discipline. And that's why the Holy Spirit produces self-control in our life. So the first area that you need discipline is spiritual. And I believe that if you are going to go up spiritually, you need to grow up. 
If you are going to go up spiritually, you need to grow. You need to grow spiritually. And Apostle Paul in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14, he said, Though at this time you ought to be teachers, because God expects that at a point in time we are independent. Because there are two levels of discipline. I forgot to mention that. There are two levels of discipline. The first one is imposed discipline, which is the one that somebody is that has authority over your life is putting on your life. So that one is imposed. That's the one that maybe a parent put on the, ch on the children for many years before they grow up. Okay? At the early stages of their life. That's how the mother eagle does in the nest. Okay? So God disciplined us too when we are still a baby in Christ. He put that discipline in us. He imposed it on us. That's why you see, if you see people that live under the law, God gave them about 613 laws. Do not, do not, do not. Because he need to tell them what to do. But in the New Testament, he didn't give us any law. But he put us under the control of God's spirit. The same goal that he still want to achieve is still there. Stealing is still wrong. Fornication is still wrong. Adultery is still wrong. But God didn't give it as a law. He put us under the control of the spirit to produce that fruit in us. So the same thing. When you are young, you are under uh, your parents. Then you will be subjected to imposed discipline. So that means your parents will tell you when you can watch TV, when you cannot watch TV, when you should eat, what you should eat, what you should not eat, where you should stay, where you should not stay, where you should go, where you should not, where you should not go. You are under their authority. You are under their instruction. You are under their guidance at that time. But as you begin to grow, when you become 18 and above, then you have some independence. Then you need a new level of discipline, which is called self-discipline. Self-discipline. It means nobody is going to be policing you. Nobody is going to controlling you. You are the one that has to decide for yourself that I'm not going to do it. You are the one that has to decide what you are going to give your time to. What you are going to give your attention to. That is self-discipline. So two kinds of discipline. Imposed discipline by somebody who has authority over you. Maybe your parent, your spiritual guidance, or your mentor, or whoever. That's imposed. They said, don't do this. Do this. They tell you all the things you need to do and not do. But the second one is the one that you uh, have for yourself, which is self-discipline. It means when you begin to work in self-discipline, you are now showing that you are mature. You are showing that you are mature. People can trust you that you will deliver. People can trust you that they don't need to watch your back. You will do the right thing at the right time. They don't need to watch whether you have done it or you have not done it. And to me, that is where God wants us to be because that's a sign of maturity. So Hebrews chapter 5 that I was reading in verse 12 and 14, Paul was talking, uh, the, the writer of Hebrews was talking, he said, For though this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again, the first principle of the oracles of God, and you have come to need meat and not solid food. For everyone will partake only in meat. So he's describing to us at the early stage what we need, the kind of food we need is meat. But as we grow, we need bread. We need a solid food. So as a believer too, as you grow in the Lord, there are some things that you will have had your senses exercised because you have read the word for yourself. There are some people that they have never even read the Bible for themselves. The only thing they know about God, they hear it through somebody else. The only thing they know about God, they hear it through their pastor. They hear it through their church leader. That's not what God desires. God desires that you have a direct communication and relationship with him because that is key to your growth. That is key to your growth. It takes an act of discipline to spend hours reading the Bible, reading the scriptures. It takes discipline. So we need spiritual discipline. That's the first thing. The second kind of discipline that we need is you need to discipline your mind. You need to discipline your mind and train it to think. Train it to think. Because, you see, there are so many thoughts that can just be flapping around in your mind. You need to set a boundary on what kind of thought you are going to be thinking on. And that is what the goal of meditation is. When you are meditating, you are consciously focusing on specific thoughts. Now, if you cannot control your mind, if you cannot control what goes on in your mind, then you will be a slave to external influences. That's why the Bible says we should guard our heart with all diligence. So you need to have a discipline in your mind. In your mind. The Bible says as a man thinks, so is he. You will become whatever you are thinking about. So if you are thinking failure, 
If you are thinking defeat, if you are thinking I will never amount to anything, if you're thinking I can never go far, guess what? You will never because it becomes your reality. It becomes your reality. So you need to discipline your mind to ensure that you don't allow negativity, you don't allow anything that doesn't line up with what God said about you. It takes a lot of discipline. That's why the Bible says we should cast down every imagination and every thought to the obedience of God. It didn't say God will come and cast it down. It is our individual responsibility to cast down every thought to the obedience of Christ. So you need discipline. That's why in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, Paul says, whatsoever things are true. These are things that you need to focus your mind on and think about. It takes discipline because you have so many things coming in in the news. You have so many things that uh, people are saying that can influence your thought. You have so many uh, things that people have said, maybe about a particular thing that you are doing that can influence your thought. So you have to make sure that you discipline yourself to line up your thinking with the word of God. Okay? He said, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any peace. Think on these things. You have to be intentional on what you are going to think about. You have to be intentional. If it is not a good report, I'm not thinking about it. If it's not something that is just, I'm not going to think about it. And it's up to you. The people that got to the promised land, they decide to focus on God's report. The people that perish in the wilderness, they decide to focus on what they hear about the giants that are in the land. So it's up to you to discipline your mind to ensure that you are thinking uh, you're thinking, you are building boundaries around your mind so that you, do, you guard your heart. You don't allow just any thought. Any thought. Any thought that comes, you can, you can just arrest them. Bring it down. Don't let it settle in your mind. Anytime you have any thought, fight that thought with, with words. Look at yourself in the mirror. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm created in the, in the image of God. I will go far. I will, reach, I, will reach, I will reach the pinnacle of God for my life. Don't let thought of defeat, failure, don't let it have a place in your heart. So you have to discipline your thought. The thought area that you need discipline is your body. Your body needs discipline. The Bible says bodily exercise, profit a little. Bodily exercise. So the word exercise requires discipline. So you need to ensure that you take care of your body because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is one of your greatest assets on this earth. So take care of your body. If you need to go to gym, make sure that you, you put it down and, and do the, the needed thing to do. You need to take care of your body. Ensure that you, you care for your health. Don't ignore your health. It's very important. It's an asset that you have and you have to take care of it. So you need to discipline your body. And also, you also need uh, body discipline, especially when you have a goal to achieve. Sometimes some people sleep and say they sleep too much. But you need to discipline about that body because sometimes what the body desires, what the body wants is against the end goal that you have. Sometimes you need to deliver a project, you need to deliver a report and the body just wants to sleep and watch TV. Well, you need discipline at that point to ensure that you stick to the goal. So sometimes you have to deny yourself sleep. You have to deny yourself some things that the body wants so that you can achieve the goal. So, discipline to your body is another thing. Now, number four thing that you need discipline on is your appetite and your desire. You see, one of the areas where our health can be affected is what we eat. What we eat. So, one thing I've learned is that much of the food that are healthy to our body, they are not easy. They are not, they are not the, the things that are pleasant for us to eat. For example, for me, I struggle with the veggies. I struggle with veggies, so, but I have to eat it, not because I like it, but I eat it because I know it's healthy. I know it's good for my health. I know it's necessary for me to stay healthy. So there are things that you are also eating that are actually destroying your body. Many of us are eating, we are eating a lot of sugar. We are eating things that are not adding value to our body. They are actually destroying the body. You have to control your appetite. Sometimes you want to fight fast, that's when the, the, the aroma of the food around you begins to smell. It takes discipline in your body to be able to say no to those things. So you have to discipline your uh, appetite and desire. Number four areas that you need discipline is in your speech or your words. Your words. You need to be disciplined in what you are saying. Don't just speak anyhow. 
Don't just utter words anyhow. Don't let emotion force you to speak. Because when you become Christ-like in your character, what will change is that your character will change, your conduct will change, and your words will change. That's why Paul told Timothy, he said, be an example of the believer in faith, in word, in love, and so on. So, so words are very important. Your words are very important. So make sure that you are disciplined in your word. Don't just speak anyhow. Don't be loose. Build boundaries around your mouth. The Bible says in the book of James, James chapter 1 verse 26, it said, if anyone among you think he is religious, that is, he is a godly person, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this one religion is useless. He's talking about faith in that chapter. So it means if you say you are somebody of faith, but you are just talking anyhow, you are, your mouth is just loose, you are just saying anything that comes, he said you are not disciplined in your mouth. So your mouth needs to be under control. The mouth is like a ruder. It determines where you are going to go in life. So he said you need discipline. You need to control it. It's like a sheep. Your life is like a sheep. That mouth is the controller. So if you are not disciplined in your mouth, your mouth can put you in trouble. Your mouth can take you where you don't want to go. So he said you need to have self-control in your word. James chapter 3, verse 2, re echo the same thing. He said, for we all stumble in many things. He said, but if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to breathe through the whole body. That is, if you can control your tongue, the Bible says you can actually control the whole body. That's how powerful the tongue is. The tongue is a very small part of the body. But it controls the direction that your life is going. So I don't know what you have also been using your tongue to say about yourself. I don't know what you have been using your mouth to say about somebody else. It controls the direction that your life is going. So don't just speak anyhow. Any word that you are going to speak, make sure that it's a word that is directed by the Holy Spirit. Because that is where the power is. The mouth is like a ruler. It controls your life. So don't just speak anyhow. Oh, I don't even think I'm going to succeed in this career. I, no, that's a language of doubt. You've got to speak by faith. You've got to speak in alignment with the word of God. And don't speak bad about people. Don't say bad word to hurt people. Don't use your word to bring somebody else down. Because you cannot be up and bring somebody else down. No. When you are up, you use your word to lift people. It's only people that are down that try to bring somebody who is up down with their words. People that are already up. What they use is they use their word to elevate. They use their word to encourage. Word has power. So control your tongue. Don't just speak anyhow. And the last thing that I want to share with you on your tongue is you have to be disciplined in the use of your time and priorities. You have to be disciplined in the use of your time and priority. Discipline in the use of your time and priority. Okay? Discipline in the use of your time. You see, Jesus said, and when he was here on that, he said, I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. He said, the night is coming when no man will be able to walk. You have to have a sense of urgency that I wouldn't have all the time for everything. But I need to prioritize. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. So you have to prioritize. You have to decide what you are going to spend your time on. Budget it. Decide. You have to be, you have to be able to control where your time is going. Because the only thing that God gives to everybody, the same amount, is time. We don't have equal money. We don't have equal gift. But the only thing that we have equal is time. And you can decide where you are going to spend your time. Whatever you spend your time on will determine how far you will go. That's why we have to be like the ants. The ant is able to reach greatness, is able to reach great height by leveraging time. The Bible says it prepares its food in summer. Ant is an example of a disciplined animal. Ant is an example of a disciplined animal. And that's why the Bible says he was a leader. So you have to discipline yourself in the area of your time and priorities. Let me tell you, people are going to bring so many ideas, so many things, for you, but it's not all of them that you need to say yes to. Anything that doesn't line up with where you are going, with your purpose in life, that is not going to add value to your life, don't waste your time on it. It's okay to say no to things. It's okay to say no. I think it's a good idea, but I don't have time for it. It's okay. It's okay. Don't say yes to everything, because if you do that, then it means you are like a city 
that is without war. And you are going to crash. You are not going to get anywhere. So I pray that the Lord will help you and bless you. And I pray that from today, the Holy Spirit will work in you to give you the gift of self-control in the name of Jesus. You are going to rise above every storm, every challenges, every difficulty. I pray that the spirit of endurance and patience will come upon you right now. That you will not reject the training. You will not reject the discipline of the Lord. You will go through the process and you will reach the top in the name of Jesus. I pray that the same way that God show up for Joseph, when it's time for him to appear in the palace, I pray God would, would showcase you in the name of Jesus. Every training that you have been going through, your day of reward is on the way. And I pray that you will not quit before your time in the name of Jesus. You will not give up before your time in the name of Jesus. You see, God prepared us in private, but he wants us to shine in, pro in public. He prepared us in private, but he wants us to shine in public. He showcased Joseph on the national stage. He showcased uh, David on the national stage. And the Bible says, your father that sees what you are doing in private, he will reward you publicly. I pray today that your seasons of reward for every investment that you have been making in private, for every discipline that you have been doing in private, your day of reward is on the way in the name of Jesus. God will remember you for good, for every sacrifice, for everything that you have been doing for the kingdom. God will reward your labor of love in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will not lose the crown. I pray that you will not lose your reward in the name of Jesus. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will keep you in the name of Jesus. In your career and in every area of your life, you will become the best in the name of Jesus. God will train you and you will be the best in everything that you do in the name of Jesus. I want you to just spend a minute and just pray and just say, Lord, I submit myself to your discipline. I submit your, myself to your guidance. In every area that the Holy Spirit has been in, uh, speaking to me, instructing me on what I should do. Lord, give me that grace. Give me that discipline. Give me that self-control. That, Lord, I will listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Maybe the Holy Spirit is telling you to spend more time doing a particular thing. Maybe the Holy Spirit is telling you to start saving some money. Maybe the Holy Spirit is telling you to, to invest. Maybe the Holy Spirit is telling you some specific things that will change the trajectory of your future. Don't reject it. Don't reject the discipline. Don't reject it. It might not look easy. It might look very tough. You might have to deny yourself of some comfort. You might have to deny yourself of some things that are not bad today just to gain that tomorrow that God is having in mind for you. But I want you to know that it's for your good. God has a great plan for your life. He has a great vision for your life. If you want to get to that dream that he has for you, then you need to accept the discipline that he gave to you. Father, we thank you today. We bless you. The entrance of your word. The Bible says it gives light. And it gives understanding to the simple. We thank you because you are a loving father. And you have the best in mind for us. You have the best plan for our life. Thank you Lord Jesus because you are guiding us in your word. You are leading us in your word. And by your spirit you have already uh, tell us your plan for our life. Which are thought of good. Which are, which are thoughts to make us the best that we could be. You want us to be the master class. You want us to shine as light. You want us to fly on wings like an eagle. You don't just want us to live in our comfort zone and be ordinary. You want us to fly and be a role model, an example of the believer in every area. Lord, tonight we submit ourselves just like Jesus did on the cross. The cross was not palatable. The cross was not something that Jesus wanted to go through. In fact, he was tempted by the devil. The devil said, oh, if you bow down to me, I'm going to give you all the treasures of this world. I'm going to hand over every treasure of this world to you. But you see, many of us, we want quick fixes. Many of us, we go through the shortcuts to get what God wants us to get through the, through the process. Lord, I pray today that you will help us so that we go through the process of training of your instruction, of your guidance in the stage of our life. Lord, I pray for those who are losing heart, who are fainting in the process. Lord, I pray that you will encourage them, you will strengthen them. I pray that we will not quit. I pray that we will not, we will, we will not quit before the time of our reward. I pray that, Lord, for those of us who are following you, 
Lord, these are challenging times spiritually. Lord, I pray that we will endure to the end. The Bible says, they that endure to the end, they will be saved. Father, our ultimate reward is a glorious place in heaven. I pray, O oh God, that Lord, in our journey of faith, in the race that you have called us unto, Lord, we will live a disciplined life. We will live a life that glorifies you. And Lord, we will receive all our reward in heaven. Paul said, I have run a good race. And now there is a crown of glory that is set before me. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that Lord, we will also receive our reward in heaven. We will not miss that reward in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Before we go, let's just uh, recap our announcement for today. So, uh, on Wednesday, please join us for prayer. Uh, join us for prayer next week, Wednesday. We are going to be having uh, a session of prayer. And I pray that the Lord himself will honor all our prayer and all our sacrifices in Jesus' name. And then next week, Sunday, is the last session in this series on swearing like an eagle. Please join us uh, next Sunday. Brother Colonius will be preaching uh, to us next week Sunday. So please join us next uh, week Sunday. Then you can give your offering online. Okay, We are not uh, gathering in person, but you can give your offering online. You can go to faithlifecommunity.org slash give and give on online. And if you are in Canada, you can give through interact to Faith Life Giving at gmail.com. I pray that the Lord that sees all that you are doing for his kingdom. The Bible says giving is, an, is a private act. When you give in secret, God said he will reward you openly. God will reward every commitment that you have made to his kingdom in the name of Jesus. He will multiply your band. He will multiply your resources in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you so much for uh, joining us again today and for being a part of today's service. I pray that the Lord himself from this week, he will begin to transit, uh, uh, change the trajectory of your life and he will take you where he has desired for you. And he will take you beyond your widest imagination in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Before we go, let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and see you on Wednesday. Bye.